Okay, so another thing I'm always looking for when I'm checking out a city to be able to live in as a ripper um, is the hospital, the medical. Well, they have a hospital here. It's actually a very fairly good-sized hospital. Now, in most of these countries, because the medical literature that is studied with is in English, most doctors can speak English and you can get by pretty well. So now this uh, hospital, you'd be able to get by for any kind of emergency treatment. You can come here. Uh, they actually have an ambulance as well. So the city is outfitted with a decent-sized hospital, which is really good. You get into these outlying areas, these smaller little towns and villages and stuff, they have a little clinic and you'll be lucky if the person can speak English. So having a, a hospital this size is really good because I'm sure within this hospital there are doctors that can speak English. So this is good and medical treatment here is also very cheap like Thailand as well. So just want to keep that in mind. And if you come and you have any kids around or whatever, there's always things to do around hospitals. You'll notice there's always food, there's coffee shops, there's everything and in this hospital. Right across the street you have a big old playground with a little roller coaster, a toboggan sled kind of thing, a, a, a merry-go-round, all sorts of stuff over here. Doesn't look like it's open right now, but anyway, everything to keep yourself and your, uh, your loved ones occupied. Plus, here's the sandwich guy coming here with the, the bread man who's coming. Plus, you see along the sidewalks all these little coffee places to sit down and have coffee while you wait if somebody's actually inside. So this is cool, something that's also a plus for Hue. So here's a place that's got laundry service for 20000 a kilo. Now the thing about that is, that's the same as our hotel. It gave us the same price as 20000 and then if we wanted it ironed, it would be 30000 baht a kilo. So it's the same price. Now, if you're wondering how much that is, it's the same place as um, almost in, in Chiang Mai, which is one of the cheapest places in Thailand to get it done, which is 30 baht uh, a kilo. So that's almost exactly the same. So there you go, laundry's cheap too in Hue. So one thing Hue has going for it is it's got a big C shopping center. Now this is, you know, probably asking like, well, why do you always mention this big C or a Lotus or a shopping center? I'm not into shopping, I'm not into all this stuff. Well, this is really important because you get into one of the smaller cities in Thailand and Vietnam, and if you don't have a department store like a Big C or Low Tus, it's really difficult finding things. So you get produce that uh, you, you might want to go for a fresh market, uh, the local fresh markets for produce and meats and stuff like that. But this is a one-stop shop. You can go into these places and they're gonna have places you can do banking, you can have places you're gonna be able to do uh, your phone repairs or buy SIM cards or top up your phones. You're gonna be able to buy uh, all sorts of appliances, uh, other kinds of food items that are uh, sort of condiments that you might wanna get from back home. You're gonna find more name brands here. Especially in Vietnam, I've noticed except in Saigon, um, where they had some Circle K's, which are, we used to have them in America, they were like a 7-Eleven. Now Thailand has 7-Eleven every 100 meters, but uh, Vietnam in Saigon had these Circle K's and it looked like a mom and pop store had sort of bought the franchise. They were, had a little bit more of a selection than the regular mom and pop uh, uh, sundry store or uh, um, I don't want to say a convenience store because it's not a really a store. They just buy some whatever they think is going to sell and stick it in a room. And that's basically all it is. Where this, this gives you a lot of options. So these, finding these in a city that you're thinking about living in is really, really important. So Hue has a big C. So this is a really good thing. Hey, JC back. Well, in Hue, there are, I, I wouldn't say it's a tourist city like, say, Nha Trang or uh, Hoi An, but it does have a certain amount of tourism because it's culturally important. It's got a lot of history to it, so foreigners do come. I gotta tell you, if you're in the area where the foreigners hang out, backpackers, or uh, just the area, you know, every city has an area where foreigners that travel tend to gravitate towards, you're gonna be thrown to the sharks in a lot of those places, not by the, the restaurants and hotels and stuff like that necessarily. It will be a little more expensive than eating at a, a very small place, a very Vietnamese place. Um, it'll be a little more than that. But if you're a category one ripper, 
you might not be able to afford that on a long-term basis, eating in a, a, a quality restaurant, what we'd consider at our standard, a former standard uh, restaurant. So you're going to have to eat um, basically and, and, and go around as the Vietnamese do. So what I did is there's actually a coffee shop across the street from where we are now, and we were going to stop there. But you can see it's a high-end coffee shop, and it's going to be more expensive there. So we came just across the street, and I wanted to show you that if you actually lived as Vietnamese people do, how much you could pay if you go to get, say, coffee, shakes, and stuff like that, the same place Vietnamese people do. So here's an example. Of this. I got my coffee with milk. That's 15000 Dong. Let me get my converter out here and I'll tell you, because everybody always asks, well, how much is that in American money? Or how much is that in Australian dollars? And, you know, and so let's see. Now remember, these con the conversion rate is going to be today. So if you watch this a year from now, from the time I post or whatever, this isn't going to be accurate, but it'll be close. So I'll try and help you out with U.S. dollars. Maybe that's easier for you to convert uh, as opposed to Vietnamese dong. So, um, the, the coffee with milk is 15000 I could probably do this in my head, but it's easier just to do this. So it's 23 baht or 67 cents US for that coffee. Now that can be upwards to 20, I've seen 20, 25,000 for that same cup of coffee. Um, so 23 baht for a, a coffee is actually really good. So that's that. Okay, strawberry smoothie. Let's get to the strawberry smoothie. 25,000, which is 40 baht, or a dollar 12 for the, the smoothie, the strawberry smoothie. And we also have an avocado smoothie. Now, avocados are really plentiful here in Vietnam when they're not that plentiful in Thailand. So they use a lot of avocados here, which is really cool. I'm an avocado lover coming from Florida. We have local avocados, which aren't as good as uh, as Calvo or uh, Haas avocados, but they're, they're okay. So anyway, the avocado is 25000 as well. Um, and so that's $1. twelve for the smoothie. If you're wondering what it tastes like, usually they're pretty good. I haven't tasted this one yet. Excellent. Very good. So there you go. Now, if, you, if you're going to come over on a Category 1 budget, you really should uh, see by getting an electric bike. Electric bikes are all over this place. Very cool. There's a lot of things I like about Vietnam. There's some things I don't like, you know. So you'd be giving up some of the things. I would be giving up some of the things that I like about Thailand to come living here, but I'd also be gaining some things as well, and I'll talk about that when I get to the end of the series, but I just wanted to mention this to you. If you eat and hang out the way Vietnamese do, you can do this on a Category 1 budget for sure, and we're going to be talking about more costs of the different things coming up shortly, so stay tuned for that as well. Uh, we'll go over some of the things of the costs here in Hue. Remember, when it comes to spending money on things like coffee, there's always an option. See you. Okay, I'm not using my microphone I usually use. This is the external microphone, <clears throat> the internal microphone of the camera. But I want to show you all something here. One, you'll probably hear a lot of honking, but I wanted you to see something. You're going to see over here, this light now turned red. Now watch. This is a red light. Now see that people are still coming on the red light. These people are going because they now have the right of way. But the people with the red light, what? You can watch if you stand to sit here for just a second, you'll see people actually just come up to the red light and just run it. Oh, we'll let it cycle one more time. I was walking up here and we're trying to cross the street and we got the light with us, but the, the, the motorbikes kept coming on a red light. So let's watch one more time and see what happens. We're watching for this light up here now to turn red. Okay, it's a red light now. Oh, here comes somebody through. The red light. They just they just go. This happens every every cycle of the light. There's people that are with the red light and they just 
They just don't even care. They just run it. But we'll watch one more time. Yep, here's a guy just ran this red light. Okay, it's a red light. They're, they're running. He's running. Let's see. Look, this guy with the flowers, he's going to run it. He's running it. Every cycle of the light, people are running it. Amazing. So we're in Hue, and one of the things I got to do, even though I don't do touristy stuff, is to actually check out the Imperial City. The Imperial City, the Hue was actually the Imperial City of uh, Vietnam for a long time, but they have the Citadel um, that uh, housed the royal family, and it's really cool. A lot of stuff here that's uh, worth checking out. So we're going to check it out, and uh, we'll, we'll put a little synopsis together. I hope you enjoy it. So here we are at the Imperial Imperial City, or the Citadel, which is a walled fortress and palace in the city of Hue, which is a former, a former imperial capital of Vietnam. The grounds of the Imperial City are protected by fortified ramparts, which are two kilometers by two kilometers, and are ringed by a moat. The water in the moat is routed from the Huang River, which means perfume river, through a series of sluice gates. This enclosure is the outer wall and the citadel. Inside the citadel is the imperial city, which is called Huang Tan, and it also has a perimeter wall some 2.5 kilometers in length. Within the imperial city is also the purple forbidden city. In June 1802, Nguyen An took control of Vietnam and proclaimed himself the emperor. His rule was recognized by China in 1804. Thousands of workers were ordered to produce a wall and a moat 10 kilometers long. Initially the walls were earthen, but later these earthen walls were replaced by stone walls 2 meters thick. The citadel was oriented to face the Huang River to the east. A second set of walls and a second moat was constructed around the emperor's palace. The reigns of the vast Vietnamese emperors lasted until the mid-1900s. At the time, the Purple Forbidden City had many buildings and hundreds of rooms. January 31st, 1968, as part of the Tet Offensive, a division-sized force of North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong soldiers launched a coordinated attack on Hue, seizing most of the city and causing substantial damage to the Imperial City. Out of 160 buildings, only 10 major sites remain because of the battle. The city was made a UNESCO site in 1993. The buildings that still remain are being restored and preserved.
So I hope you've enjoyed our little visit to the Imperial City in Hue. And if you get a chance and you're in Hue, you should stop and check this out. It's really cool, very cool. So hope you enjoyed it. JC back. Well, we're getting ready to say goodbye to Hue. So I just wanted to mention there's some things I want to throw in here at the end um, that I think I haven't covered and also some changes in opinions. You know, we've been here now for a few days and when I first got here, I sort of compared it to some of the other places we, we went that I was really feeling comfortable. And so I, I wasn't giving it a fair shake, I think, when I first got here. After spending a few days, it's a nice little city. It really is. It's pleasant to be at. People aren't quite as friendly as other places we've been, but it, it's good. Um, it's cheap to live here. In fact, in some ways, it's cheaper than other cities that we've been in. So I want to give you some prices, um, but then also talk about something I didn't figure on. So the cost, some of the costs in, in, in Hue and some of the things I wanted to mention. One is the Vietnamese vendors uh, will often charge um, five to 10,000 more Vietnamese dong on top of prices for foreigners. So I know some people get upset about this in Thailand and it's a big issue. To me, it's not a big issue because I forget what the conversion is of that. Um, five, 5,000 is like, it's not very much. So I wouldn't worry about it. It's just sort of a foreign tax that's put on top of things. So, but I did want to mention it to you. So make sure you always ask for a price before you buy something or you order something uh, that you, that's food and somebody tells you how much it is, ask how much it's going to be. And remember, you can always bargain here. So if you don't like it, you can ask for the price to be a little bit lower. Um, so some of the costs. The Vietnamese coffee will cost anywhere between 5000 and 20000 Vietnamese dong, which is about $0.25 cents to about $1. Uh, sugar cane water, which you see here, which I never ordered here because you know the high it's got a high glycemic value because of the amount of sugar that's in it. But what's really weird, we just finally ordered one at the train station here. And guess what? They actually added some uh, lemon juice to it, which really made it tasty, really, really good. So um, that's usually priced about 5,000 Vietnamese dong or about 25 cents. Uh, and the same with um, uh, fresh coconuts, the green coconuts, young coconuts. Uh, they'll open up, put a straw in. And yogurt drinks are very popular. And usually sell about the same price as a coffee. You get yogurt with fruit mixed, blended together. Very tasty. Meals at local food stalls and restaurants are gonna cost you somewhere around between 20,000 and 40,000. Remember, that's local, uh, which is between one and two dollars US. If you go to uh, uh, a foreigner restaurant, it's gonna be a lot more than that. Uh, most of the, the Vietnamese dishes consist of uh, rice noodles. Uh, I wondered why they raise so much rice here, because they don't use it in a lot of dishes, it's because they make a lot of their noodles out of it. And that's what uh, most, a lot of Thai, uh, Vietnamese dishes are made of, rice noodles. Um, Hue offers a, a fair amount of vegetarian uh, restaurants throughout the city, but also you'll find vegetarian, this is something I noticed since I hit uh, Vietnam. Almost every restaurant has vegetarian items on the menu, and a lot of it is because a lot of these people practice eating vegetarian one day or two days a week. So it's really a good thing if you're into vegetarian food. Um, Vietnamese sandwiches, something that I love, the baguettes, are popular and they're cheap and they're quick. A sandwich will cost around 10,000 Vietnamese uh, dong, or about 50 cents US, maybe sometimes 12,000 on the street. There'll be more again if you go into a, a foreigner restaurant. A local beer is called Huda beer. I don't think that I've seen any around. Uh, it'll cost between 7,000 and 15,000, which is between about 33 cents and 75 cents US. Um, if you're drinking in areas that are tourist areas, expect to pay a lot more than that. Uh, motorbikes are relatively affordable to buy or rent. A motorbike will cost around 50,000 to 100,000 dong a day, which is between 250 and $5 US a day. Um, but remember, Hue is, is small, small enough to rent a bicycle. Bicycles are rented everywhere here, and so you could get around and be a lot safer, uh, maybe more practical to get around by bicycle. Um, you gotta have brass, you know what's to, to drive here. Um, 
Hawaii has a lot of guest houses and hotels, and they can offer you affordable long-term accommodations, and they'll take the day rate and discount it for you. Uh, for foreigners, rooms go for about 90 to 150 US dollars a month, and depending on what kind of facilities they have, and you can actually get multiple story houses that can be leased for about $350 a month. Um, one thing to keep in mind, petty theft is, seems to be rampant here, uh, which is the norm in Vietnam. So you need to really take care of your stuff, watch your stuff, um, guard your belongings and valuables. Not like Thailand where you leave your phone on the tables and stuff like this, or your bags. Even the helmets, motorcycle helmets, lock them up underneath the seats or take them in with you. Uh, motorbikes need to be locked or indoors, preferably, at night. So keep all that in mind. I hope that's really helpful. One other thing I wanted to mention to you, which I didn't anticipate, is that uh, the temperatures. I noticed it on Thursday in Hawaii, it's going to be 102 degrees Fahrenheit. We noticed when we got here, it was the hottest we've ever felt since we've been in Vietnam, and the humidity is higher. It's going to be 102 on Thursday, which is 39 degrees Celsius. In, in Da Nang, da Nang uh, it's going to be 96 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 36 degrees centigrade. And on Thursday in Nakhon, it's going to be 94 degrees, 94 degrees Fahrenheit, or 34 degrees Celsius. Now, this is one thing, a big difference between Thailand and Vietnam. Vietnamese people are very loud, like Chinese people are. But Thai people are very reserved, and they'll push the chairs and do things. They're, they're more pushy. It's, it's Chinese influence here. Um, I'd say it would be the Vietnamese influence on the Chinese, but the Chinese were here first. So. <laughs> um, not strong. Uh, 94 degrees Fahrenheit, 34 degrees Celsius. Dalat, which is up in the mountains, which I really like, is only going to be 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 29 degrees Celsius. And Ho Chi Minh City, Saigon is going to be 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. So you can see, just in this half of the country, from the central part, part from the middle of the country down, there's a very varying degree of temperatures even in, in that amount of area. So keep that in mind too. Go to some place that you like the weather and like the conditions there as well as the people. Those are my criteria, or a couple of my criteria, and price. So I hope this is helpful. We're in the train station, we're waiting on our train, it's been delayed a little bit. And then we're off, guess where we're going next? We're going back to Hoi An, which we only went for an exploratory mission for one day by motorbike. So I don't think I gave it a fair shake uh, in one day. I know it feels like going into a, a, a theme park, that it was created just for foreigners and tourists, like they built all this stuff just as an attraction, but that's not, it does have a history, and so I want to go back and see if you actually live there, if you could avoid all that, um, but also there's more infrastructure there for foreigners and tourists because so many come there, so maybe it's a great place, we'll see how much the costs are and if it's a good place to live. But anyway, JC and Matt headed for the train, and uh, talk to you soon.